Hi, it's Michelle from Lab Muffin Beauty Science, Chemistry PhD and Skincare Nerd. Today we're going to be talking about skincare when it comes to wearing masks. I had a lot of requests about this topic as well as how to look after your hands when you're washing your hands a lot, which I talked about in my last video. And again, I went to lots of dermatologists and asked them for their advice on dealing with skin issues when you're wearing a mask. Skin problems can come up when you wear any sort of covering on your face. This can happen with cloth masks, which you might wear when you're going to the store. This is one that my aunt sewed for me. Or it can happen with surgical masks, which a lot of healthcare workers wear. On a more extreme level, it can happen with hard respirators like this one, which I wore during the bushfires last year in Australia. A lot of healthcare workers who work closely with COVID patients will be wearing these for hours on end. So here's a guide to the common skin issues that might happen when you're wearing a mask and how to deal with them. If you like this sort of video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and click the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. First off, let's talk about the sorts of skin issues that you might see when you're wearing a mask for a long period of time. With a looser mask, the main issue is going to be skin irritation. This includes dryness, itching, and redness. This is called irritant contact dermatitis, and this happens because of the extra heat from the mask, the fact that your breath and your sweat are making it very moist and humid under the mask, plus there's the friction of the mask rubbing against your skin. You can also get acne from the material rubbing against your skin and physically blocking your pores. This is called acne mechanica. Respirators are a lot harder and they fit much more tightly against your skin. This means you can end up with hives and pressure sores, raw skin and blisters. Different components of the mask, like adhesives, rubber straps, and even free formaldehyde from N95 respirators, these can all cause irritant and allergic reactions. This means red and inflamed skin, itching and rashes. So here's some advice for what to do when you're wearing the mask. Firstly, it's a good idea to avoid heavy makeup and foundation under the mask. The extra pressure and friction from the mask can mean that you get spots and acne, even if you don't normally react to these products. You can also use a moisturizer or a barry cream like zinc oxide or dimethicone based 3M Cavalon under the mask, especially on the spots where the mask rubs and causes pressure. This is generally on your nose, the size of your face and under your chin. Be careful if you're a healthcare worker using a respirator. If you're using these products right before you put on the mask, it can affect the quality of the seal. So check if this applies to you. You can also use protective dressings like hydrocolloid bandages and skin tapes on areas where the mask rubs or if you have a wound. Dr. Anjali Mato recommends removing pressure every one to two hours where possible. Here are some tricks from Dr. Papri for relieving pressure from behind your ears. You can use a paper clip or a strap to turn the loops that go behind your ears into a strap that goes around your whole head. If you have longer hair, you can also wear princess layer buns and put the loops around those. Make sure you monitor your skin for signs of infection and seek medical help. Here are some products that might be useful in a skincare routine if your skin's been irritated by a mask. It's a good idea to use a mild soap-free facial cleanser or makeup remover wipes right after you've taken off the mask. Dr. Anjali Mato recommends using lukewarm water to wash your face, not water that's too hot or too cold because that can cause irritation. You should also pat your face dry with a towel rather than rubbing. If you do develop acne, some good anti-acne ingredients are benzoyl peroxide, salicylic acid, azelaic acid, sulfur, and retinoids. If your skin is easily irritated by benzoyl peroxide, Dr. Papri recommends washing it off after 20 to 30 minutes, which is called short contact. This can help reduce irritation and dryness. Exfoliants and retinoids work really well if you have acne, but they do cause a lot of irritation. So if your skin's already irritated, it's probably best to avoid these or use gentler versions. In terms of moisturizers, Dr. Adelin recommends moisturizers which contain glycerin, ceramides, hyaluronic acid, and niacinamide. These are all very gentle on your skin and good for helping barrier repair. You can also use thick emollients like Vaseline and Aquaphor to help your skin heal. You can also try using dimethicone-based barrier creams or products like La Roche-Posay Sicapair Balm B5. 
If you have a rash, a few dermatologists also recommended trying some over-the-counter 1% hydrocortisone cream. You can use a thin layer twice a day for a week or two, and this will reduce itching, redness, and inflammation. You can also talk to a doctor who can prescribe a stronger steroid cream. Another problem that can develop after a while is post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. These are patches of brown pigment that develop after your skin's healed. If you want more tips on how to fade this, you can check out my video on hyperpigmentation. If your skin is very irritated, then it's a good idea to get rid of irritating products from your routine until you stop wearing masks so much. So things like exfoliants and retinoids. The people I spoke to also gave me some extra tips for wearing masks. Remember that the front of your mask gets contaminated after you've worn it, so don't touch it. Dr. Papri recommends that if you're planning to reuse a mask, you can store it in a Tupperware container. Put a Tupperware container over your mask, take off the straps, and then you can store the mask in the Tupperware container. When you reapply it, put the Tupperware container on your face and put the straps back on. It's also a good idea to wash your hands before you put on a mask and after you take it off. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, you can give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Leave me a comment if you have any more tips on using masks. Thank you to all of the experts who shared their tips with me. I've put their social media accounts here, so give them a follow. If you want to find out more about the science behind beauty products, you can follow me on Instagram and check out my blog. See you next time for more science-based beauty content.